This video needs to be played in every boardroom in Houston. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. In case you didn't read the title, today's video is about getting guided and how to be a good client. A successful guided fishing trip is not entirely up to the guide. A lot of it is up to you and your attitude. So we're gonna go over some of the things that can help you be a better sport, I mean client. I've been waiting since this morning to film this so I could have a beer. It's 7.30 a.m. now. I know a fair amount about how to be a good client, not because I am one, but from 20 years of guiding all kinds of people. I'm a fly fishing guide. I've learned a lot about what I like in a client. Money, we like money. And maybe more importantly, what I don't like. Let's start with the obvious stuff. Show up on time. It's rude to be late. And if you're late, you're wasting the guide's time. And time is money. That's not just an expression, it's true. If you show up late, I might extend the trip or I might not. It's my call. It depends on how nice you are and what I've got going on afterwards. If you're late, you're eating into your time, not mine. So don't be late, but also don't show up too early. That time before the trip starts is the guide's precious alone time before he has to babysit you all day. The guide wants to savor those last few precious moments alone. Finish off the coffee, have another smoke, mentally preparing to deal with you. If you show up too early, you could ruin the vibe for the whole day. Just show up when you're supposed to. One thing you might be wondering about is how much to tip your guide. I'll be straight up with you. 20% or more if you had a great time. Guided trips are expensive. If you can afford to hire a guide, you can afford to tip well. Okay, moving on. Another thing you can do to be a good sport, I mean client, is be prepared. By that I mostly mean clothing and stuff. We're gonna be outside, it rains sometimes. The wind blows, it gets cold. Bring a jacket, bring a hat, sunglasses. Polarized, of course. As the guide, I probably have a spare jacket or glasses, but I don't have three of them for all of them. But also, don't bring too much. If it's a wade fishing trip, I don't wanna carry all your stuff. I'm already carrying your lunch and water. I don't wanna carry your camera or your purse or your little toy dog. Of course, if you're hiring a good guide, they should tell you what to bring. Listen to that advice. Don't wear studded boots in the boat. What are you doing, man? Sorry, dude. Another thing you can do to be a good sport, I mean client, is set clear expectations of what you want. When I'm guiding, I always make a point at the beginning of the day to ask the sport, I mean client, what they want to accomplish throughout the day. But I think most guides don't do that. So you can help them out by telling them what you want to do. Well, I just want to catch a bunch of big fish, duh. Yeah, everybody says that. But you can help the guide out and make the day more fun if you do have some specific things on your agenda. Maybe you want to work on your casting. Maybe you want to take some time out from fishing and learn some knots. I've spent a lot of time during guide trips sitting on the bank with sports, I mean clients, talking about stuff and learning instead of actually fishing. It's kind of a nice break, to be honest with you. For you, not me. I'd rather just stand there and say mend all day. All right, here comes today's pro tip. Get a pencil. Don't get drunk on your guide trip. Nobody wants to deal with that. Moderation's fine. You can have a couple beers, but take it easy. A lot of the places I've guided for have a no alcohol policy on guide trips. And that's not a terrible idea. And now I know what you're thinking and I agree with you. Fishing without beer is a little bit strange, but it can be done. Oh, here's something else not to do. Don't tell me how you went on a guided trip somewhere else and the fishing was better. I do not care. We're here right now. This is what I'm focused on. You've been to Alaska. Great, me too. Oh, the fishing is so good on this private ranch I usually go to. Unless you're gonna take me there, I don't wanna hear about it. Just pay attention to what we're doing. Okay, next. Another important thing you can do as the sport, I mean client, is listen to your guide and do what they tell you to do. This is why you are paying them. Don't just nod and say okay every time I tell you to stop dropping your back cast. You need to do it. I'm serious, it's like amazing. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, okay. Over and over. I know you heard what I'm telling you to do, but you actually need to do it, if you want to catch fish anyway. For some reason, women are a lot better at this than men. So listen to your guide and do what they say, but also don't be afraid to speak up if you're not happy with something. 
you're paying for this. This is your money. It is ultimately my goal to make you happy. So if you don't like something, speak up, but not in a whiny or complaining way. Just talk to me. Maybe you want to go to a different spot. Maybe you want to sit down and take a break. Maybe you don't like my jokes. That's fine. I can adapt to the situation. That's my job. If you're not happy, I want to know about it so I can change things. Remember, it's your day. I'm just wrong. That phrase is actually trademarked by a friend of mine and I have exclusive rights to use it. So back off! Another thing you can do as a good sport, I mean client, is use your brain. If we're making the same drift over and over, and I've told you to mend the last nine drifts, you should know to make that mend on the 10th drift. I should not have to say it. But what happens every time on that 10th drift? I don't say mend and you don't mend. Why? Are you not paying attention to what is going on here? Use your brain, man. Look at what's going on. You have to be involved. The rod's in your hand, not mine. Hey, if you wanna waste your time, that's fine with me. It's your day, I'm just rowing, but I still better get a good tip. Also, as the sport, client, remember to be humble. The guide is the expert, not you. Well, hopefully the guide's the expert. Not all of them are. You're hiring me for my expertise, either in fly fishing in general, or on the local fishery. Don't second guess what I'm doing. Don't tell me my knots are bad, unless they are. Just relax, let me do my job, and do what I tell you to do. Another thing you should do to be a good client is be honest about your abilities and experience. I've said this before, but going to a lodge in Alaska once a year for the last 20 years does not mean you've been fly fishing for 20 years. That doesn't mean anything to me. Tell me how often you fish, what you normally fish for, how far you can comfortably cast, I will automatically subtract 20 feet from that, and maybe your general athletic ability if we're gonna be walking around in the woods and stuff. But be honest, because I'm gonna find out exactly what you're made of as soon as we hit the water. If I find out you've been lying to me, I'm not gonna take you to my ace box. You might say you're comfortable wading in rivers, but when you fall down as soon as we get off pavement, I'm gonna know what's up. It's pretty obvious when someone doesn't get outside much. I'm what you call indoorsy. Maybe the most important thing you can do as a good client is remember to have fun. That's the whole point of this, having fun. Don't get upset when you make mistakes. Don't worry about losing flies in the trees or getting tangled, missing hook sets, breaking fish off, whatever. That's just normal stuff. Don't worry about it. We have more flies. Two dollars each. We deal with this stuff all the time. It's fine. Don't apologize and don't get upset with yourself. Have fun. So what, you lost a fly in a tree. It's gonna happen again. As a good sport, I mean client, you need to be understanding of the limitations of a guide trip. Bad weather, time constraints. I will end a trip because of lightning. I won't go fish the river that you want to that's three hours away. If you wanna do that, you gotta hire a guide from Denver because they gotta drive that far anyway. Stay off my water. But probably the biggest limitation is you, the sport, I mean client. The rod is in your hand. I can only do so much. I'm a guide, not guide. God. That's why I'm making this video for you. If you're a guide and watching this, you're welcome. Okay, let's talk about kids on guided trips. This can be a bit of a sticky issue. Different outfitters will have different rules as far as how old a kid has to be before they can go on a guide trip. I think standard is kind of 10, 12 years old, but it depends. This is how it usually goes. Well, he's eight years old, which might be a little young, but he really loves fishing. That's the conversation every day. And I'm sure he does love fishing. That doesn't mean that a guided trip is appropriate for your eight-year-old. I've done tons of those trips. Some are great, some are awful. Your kid doesn't listen to you, why is he gonna listen to me? If you wanna get your kid on that guided trip, basically you need to beg, maybe grease the wheels a little bit. And if someone does take your young kid on a guided trip, tip huge, cause it ain't easy. If it was easy, you'd be doing it. Okay, you guys ready to be done? Me too, I think we're good. Thank you very much for watching another one of my videos. This is where I say like and subscribe. Check out hugeflyfisherman.com for some gear. Now go hire a fly fishing guide and learn something. And stay huge. All right, eight o'clock, let's go out for breakfast.